Okay, so my lecture will be on heterogeneity in uh, large-scale data. Uh, in nowadays data, heterogeneity arises in various forms, like we can imagine having different uh, subpopulations, uh, structural breaks, shifts, uh, perturbations over time and space, and uh, we have to deal with that. So, um, examples include uh, various areas like health, genomics, genetics, uh, environmental, climate sciences, uh, also economics and e-commerce. Data, in contrast to what has happened maybe decades ago where we had uh, well-designed experiments, the data now arises as a collection from automatic measurement devices. Uh, we have sensors and this is how heterogeneity arises. Now, at first sight, we might think that <clears throat> this is very bad, right? We have this kind of big bag of quite dirty data. The collection of the data is not nicely planned, uh, and we have to deal with that. But I tried to convince uh, and convey in the lecture that actually we can take also advantage of heterogeneity if we have such uh, data. The main idea is in a way an invariance principle uh, or a stability principle which would uh, go as follows. So we would say that, okay, we have this heterogeneous data, but because we have lots of data, we can try to see stable patterns, invariant substructures in the data, and they are interesting per se. Now, if you define them properly, then uh, you can actually make an interesting uh, relation to causality, and I'm coming back to that uh, in my short uh, explanation. I want to say here a, a short historical remark. Already, Tryggve Havelmo, he was a Norwegian economist uh, who got the Nobel Prize in 1989. He already recognized in a paper in 1943 that causal models, whatever that is, causal models have a so-called invariance property. And so that was very crucial that this invariance property arises from causal models. Now what we do, and what I try to explain in my lecture, is somehow the reverse relation. Namely, we can look for invariance structures in the data. Because we have lots of heterogeneous data, we can try to infer heterogeneity and then reverse engineer to causality. So this should uh, provide interesting new aspects. Uh, there are also interesting connections between causality and robustness, and I want to explain that in my talk as well. So what we can come up with are new uh, prediction methods, which are uh, mainly robust against new uh, potentially adversarial scenarios which have not been seen in the data. So a typical example would be in finance, maybe you have collected data, and there are new scenarios, and you try to predict those without having seen them exactly in the historical data. So this could be potentially useful in finance, economics, and e-commerce. I have been working for a while on causality question, and causality is has been always an interesting question. It is uh, a very timely question nowadays. And maybe it is a very ambitious word, and I try to explain it a bit. Uh, causality tries to uh, provide an answer to a what if I do question. And for example, in economics, it could mean the question, what would happen if we implement a certain policy? What would happen to the state of the economy? And causality tries to give an answer to that question without having seen this perturbation, without having data or access to this uh, issue. So we don't have access to the implementation of a new policy, nevertheless, we want to predict it. So my area of applications is a bit more in the life sciences. I'm interested, for example, in the what if I do question as follows. What would happen if I knock out a certain gene in a plant? What would be its effect? on the growth rate of a plant. And we try to provide an answer to that question without having seen that knockout experiment, without having seen that perturbation. 
Uh, so the data which we have are observational data from the plant, maybe other gene perturbations, but not that particular one. So maybe obviously this is quite an interesting question. And so this invariant stability idea provides actually quite surprising, uh, interesting new ways to deal with that question. So as I said before, I have worked on causality for a while, uh, and now we put it slightly into a different perspective. We looked at some sort of a changed concept of that, and that I find very exciting. Uh, there are exciting methodological issues, connections between causality and robustness, and there are many fascinating uh, math and stats problems. So the relation is that uh, this lecture is about information extraction from large-scale data. It should provide uh, tools for the analysis of big data, in quote. So this program actually, uh, if you read the description on the webpage, it uh, says uh, that it deals with uh, data which has been stored and collected at unprecedented scales. And so I think my lecture provides aspects of that, and I hope it will fit well to the program. Thank you.